Dr. Samuel Zwamer mentions the fact that false teaching always produces strife and envy and trouble. He said that you cannot explain the wickedness of the world as merely human. It is human plus something. And that is why non-Christian religions are successful. They are supernatural, but from beneath. And anything that causes division and strife, and I don't care whose church it's in, it's not of the Lord. You may be sure of that. And you may boast of fundamentalism, but if you're causing strife, I want to tell you, you got up the wrong flag. Now he says, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by them that make peace. Now, faith, that is saving faith, produces something. And so God, first of all, he tests faith by trials. We saw that. I'd like today, as we move through that first section very briefly, give you a quotation that is found in Dr. Lehman Strauss's book on James. And by the way, I do not have his book listed in the notes. And the reason is I was not acquainted with it at the time. And I made that list some time ago. And I ought to put it in there because he has one of the best books on the epistle of James. Well, he is quoted from someone else who's also a friend of mine, who has suffered a great deal. And that's Dr. Richard Sumi, who is now at Dallas Seminary and was formerly at the Wheaton Bible Church, and he served also in Patterson, New Jersey. He's an outstanding Bible teacher, and he's had kidney trouble. He's been on a machine now for several years. And if there's any man that knows what it is to suffer, he certainly knows that. Now, Dr. Strauss quotes from Dr. Sumi, and now I'm going to give you that quotation because it made a great impression on me because I knew it did not come from a preacher who was just giving his theory, his idea. This comes from a man that has suffered. Listen to him. Life on earth would not be worth much if every source of irritation were removed. Yet most of us rebel against the things that irritate us and count as heavy loss what ought to be rich gain. We are told that the oyster is wiser, that when an irritating object like a bit of sand gets under the mantle of his shell, he simply covers it with the most precious part of his being, and he makes of it a pearl. The irritation that it was causing is stopped by encrusting it with the pearly formation. A true pearl is therefore simply a victory over irritation. Every irritation that gets into our lives today is an opportunity for pearl culture. The more irritations the devil flings at us, the more pearls we may have. We need only to welcome them and cover them completely with love that most precious part of us, and the irritation will be smothered out as the pearl comes into being. What a store of pearls we may have if we will. And I think Dick Sumi is going to have quite a few pearls, by the way. And that comes from his heart and comes out of experience, and I wanted to share that with you today. Now, God tests faith by trials. Then we saw that God does not test faith with evil. Evil comes from our flesh within, the troubles on the inside of us. Now, the next way God tests us, though, he tests us by the Word and not by the doctrine we hold. We may be fundamental, but what do we do? Are we living that out? The thing that James is saying, if you're going to be a witness for Christ today, knowing is not enough. Now, that's important. That's the foundation But you need to build something, as Paul says, on the foundation. No other foundation can any man lay. You can't lay the foundation. But my friend, you can build on it. And if you're on the foundation, you're going to build something. Now, we have another test. God tests faith by attitude and action in respect of persons. And then God tests faith by good works. Good works are important for a child of God, but not for the unsaved. And we're going to see that as we come to it now in today's lesson. 
Now, in chapter 3, last time, we saw that God tests faith by the tongue. The tongue is your fraternity pen. Tongue tells who you are. 